I'm Bruce Gardner, author of the book, The Spirit of Attack. You may wonder why the Air Force continues to use radar as our primary means of attacking enemy aircraft instead of using infrared, which is shown as being very effective, very simple, and very long range. In reality, infrared has many limitations, tactical as well as the physics of the infrared spectrum. Tracking by missiles such as early sidewinders is done by nutation. Consider the dot in the center as the axis of the missile. The missile's field of view is spun in a clockwise direction, but off-center called nutation. In this example, the target is to the upper right and is detected by the upper right two lobes of the antenna, but not in the others. The energy from the upper two antennas is driven to the missile controllers, which turn the missile to the upper right until the target is in the center and the energy from all the lobes is the same. When the missile is launched, it sees the target directly ahead and as the target moves to the right, the missile turns to the right to keep the target directly ahead. This is called the curve of pursuit. A radar missile, though, knows the range to the target. After flying straight briefly while its booster motor burns, it turns and aims directly toward the computed place where the target will be. This is called a lead collision attack. If the target turns hard toward you, the infrared missile with a curve of pursuit attack has a real problem. It is traveling much faster than the target and therefore, despite its high G's, cannot turn as sharply as the target. This results in an overshoot in a button hook maneuver where it loses energy and may miss the target completely. The radar missile is on a lead collision course because it knows the range of the target. The interceptor has already turned part way because the interceptor knows the point of impact and has already turned. So when the missile is fired, it does not have so much of a turn to make. As the target turns, the missile knows the changing distance and recomputes the point of impact and flies a fairly straight line and cannot be outmaneuvered. This infrared picture of two F-18s makes them look like excellent infrared targets. But look more closely. The darker areas are cool parts of the fuselage which are easily lost in background clutter. The best target is the afterburner which looks very bright but you'll find that's not quite as good as it looks. And look just forward of the afterburner at the hot engine parts. These are glowing at another wavelength. Focus your attention on the left side of this chart. The colored bands are visible light. The high blue bands are the areas where there is less atmospheric absorption and these are good for missile tracking. The areas of low blue, or no blue, are areas where the atmospheric absorption prohibits the transmittal of light. At the left of the chart, in the visible and near visible light, there is a lot of natural clutter which makes it bad for missile tracking. The first vertical arrow on the left shows where the original sidewinders uncooled seeker head would track. There is still a lot of clutter in that area from natural sources which made it poor for missile tracking. It would home in on too many clouds and other things. The second arrow shows where cooled seeker heads 
such as my favorite F-106 and our AIM-4G missile would track. This 3.5 micron band was excellent for missiles because there was very little natural clutter and this is the band where hot engine parts and the sides of the aircraft would transmit. To track in this area we had to cool the seekers usually using liquid nitrogen or argon. The Russians didn't use liquid nitrogen or argon. They used pure alcohol and I doubt if they got quite down to this 3.5 micron band. To get the 100% alcohol that the Russians needed, they kept distilleries right on their fighter bases. I have heard that large quantities of this high quality alcohol leaked out and were consumed by the local troops or traded with other units for needed supplies. In summary, the near-infrared spectrum is not good for missile tracking because of all the natural clutter. You have to cool the missile head in order to get down to where you can see the engine parts as well as the afterburner clearly at longer ranges. For stealth and infrared, the plane must be designed to pass cooling air between the engine and the external fuselage to cool the external fuselage so it does not transmit infrared as we see in these pictures. And you need to adapt the tail surfaces to hide as much of the afterburner as possible. The F-35 is designed with air passing around the engine to cool the fuselage and the tail surfaces hide the engine as much as possible. The F-35 is designed for stealth.